guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today is going to be a little instructional video about how we make our, our homemade wine, uh, Cruises Swamp Spirits. Uh, we've been making it for, a, uh, I don't know, about three years now. Uh, we've made wine out of every different fruit you can think of. Uh, it comes out pretty good most of the time. Uh, this is an instructional video about uh, white wine. Uh, we pulled about 50 pounds of grapes off of our, our vines in the backyard on July the 4th. Uh, actually had some good footage of that, but I think I deleted it. I can't find it. Sorry about that. But uh, it's an instructional about how we go through it and uh, you know how we make it, uh, how we process it, how we bottle it, all that good stuff. Don't beat me up in the comments because I don't do everything exactly right. Um, because I don't. Uh, I don't watch videos or, or copy people's recipes. I like to figure things out on my own. So uh, it, it's, it's probably not how it's supposed to be done, but uh, we do produce some good tasting wine. We've given away hundreds of bottles and it's not very often that we get some bad feedback. So uh, anyway, hope y'all enjoy. Y'all have a good day. Bye -bye. 50 pounds of grapes and we're gonna make five gallons of wine. That's 50, 50 pounds of grapes in, uh, in a mesh bag. We're about to smash it up and I'll show you what that looks like when we're done. Keep mashing that until you get a, a, good, a good mush of all your goodies. Alright, I've been mashing on that for about 15 minutes. It's as mashed as it's going to get. Uh, I'm going to get my ingredients together and get the sugar ready and uh, we'll show you some more in a sec. And for this particular recipe, we're going to use. Uh, we're going to use five teaspoons of yeast nutrient, uh, 2.5 teaspoons of pectic enzyme, 2.5 teaspoons of acid blend, 2.5 teaspoons of tannin, and uh, five crushed Campden tablets to start uh, to sterilize. This is this is the I don't know third or fourth time I've made uh, grape wine grapes from my garden and I've been tinkering every time. The last batch uh, was really good. So I'm just going to duplicate that exactly uh, to try to you know try to get that same that same uh, that same taste that I did last time. So uh, that's the ingredients for what I did. Again, it's uh, about five gallons of of must right now. Six pounds of sugar and the ingredients that I just that I just showed you. Uh, and we hope it turns out good. So we've added all our ingredients. Uh, I've dissolved six pounds of sugar in about a gallon of water and uh, we're going to add it, uh, stir everything up real good and take a specific gravity reading with the hydrometer. Well it don't look too pretty right now. It kind of looks like ditch water but uh, it sure smells good and uh, we're just going to stir everything up good so we can get a, 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 good, a good specific gravity reading. All right, here's my sample, and I uh, dropped my hydrometer in, hydrometer, hydrometer in there. Uh, I just got a new one because I broke my old one, and they sent me this opaque little cylinder here, which I don't love because you can't get a, you know, you can't see a, a live reading in there because it's opaque. But uh, I get a ballpark, and, uh, you know, I kind of mark it and then pull it out. It looks like our specific gravity is 1.10 which uh, is going to equate to about 14% uh, alcohol content, which is pretty doggone good for a wine. Um, it's not too strong, but uh, it does have a little kick. So that's where we are. I'm good with that. I'm not going to add any more sugar. The six pounds got me where I need to be. So uh, on to the next step. All right, we're all mixed up. Specific gravity is where we want it. All our ingredients are in there. Um, I'm going to put the lid on. I'm just going to leave the lid loose uh, for 24 hours. Uh, no airlock or anything. Just leave it kind of loose. Uh, let those sulfites sterilize and, uh, and, and do their work. And 24 hours from now, we'll uh, add our yeast. We'll rehydrate our yeast and add them and uh, stick an airlock on there. And I'll show you all what that looks like tomorrow. Thanks a lot. We're going to uh, use uh, for our yeast labeling. EC1118. I usually use EC1113, but I don't have any, and I have this this pack, so it's going to be just fine. So uh, we rehydrate that in a cup of, of warm water. We're going to let it sit for about 15 minutes, and then we're going to pour it in our uh, in our container, and put a 
put an airlock on it, seal it up nice and tight, and hopefully it'll start bubbling here in a minute. All right, here's our must that's been uh, sitting overnight, 24 hours. It, uh, the sulfites have done their work. Everything in there should be completely sterile. We are going to add our rehydrated yeast and seal it up tight. <clears throat> There's a little O-ring around the lid that seals it up nice and tight. Uh, so we're going to seal that up real good. We're going to put our airlock on. And I'm still, you know, the airlock during fermentation, I don't know, man. So I've done someone airlocked and someone not airlocked. Really doesn't seem to make a difference. Um, I like to see it bubble. So I like to know that the yeast are working. So uh, it appears that there's enough oxygen in there, especially with me popping the lid off, stirring it every day, that uh, there's no CO2 buildup or there's no issue uh, with lack of oxygen with the with using an airlock during the primary fermentation. So I don't think it matters either way. I'm sure there's a lot of other people who disagree, but in my experience, it really just doesn't matter. So anyway, uh, I'll check back with you tomorrow. We're going to pop the lid and give it a stir. And hopefully by in the morning, uh, we'll start seeing some bubbles there in the airlock. It's been 24 hours since we uh, put in the, the yeast. And we have a slow bubble. The yeast are, uh, are, are probably still reproducing and, and just now starting to eat. Uh, the bubble should increase. You know, tomorrow they ought to be bubbling pretty doggone good. But uh, at least fermentation has started, and it looks like we're going in the right direction. So well, here it is. I'm going to take my sterilized spoon and just uh, just stir it up a little bit. Smells really good. But uh, usually after you stir it, that first time they uh, it really activates those yeast and that that airlock will just go nuts so but uh, anyway I'm gonna stir it up put the lid and the airlock back on and we'll check it again so this is the day uh, after our first stir and uh, it's bubbling pretty doggone aggressively so those yeast are doing their job uh, and we're just gonna let it bubble I'm not gonna pop it and stir it again until probably tomorrow. Uh, I'll, I'll stir it about every two days. Uh, but anyway, it's aggressively fermenting right now, making alcohol and CO2, obviously. Thanks a lot. This is day three. Uh, it's bubbling a little bit more aggressively. Um, I'm about to pop the lid and, uh, and, and, and stir it with my big spoon. And I'm gonna sterilize my spoon with a solution of star sand. But, uh, I'll show you what it looks like. It's gonna be pretty ugly, but uh, I just part. All right, we're on day four. It is bubbling really good, really aggressively. I'm gonna give it a quick stir and put the airlock on. Ooh. Alright, we're about 10 days in, or we are 10 days in, and uh, the bubbles have stopped. I'm going to pop the lid off and take a hydrometer reading. Uh, if the hydrometer reading is around 1.0, or uh, if it it's, if it's, looks like it's done fermenting, I'm going to rack it into a carboy. Uh, if not, I'll stir it up and, and let it ferment for another couple of days, but uh, no more bubbles, so I expect we're done. We're gonna check it here. So we got us a little sample. Uh, I started up a little bit, got us a sample, dropped the hydrometer in, and I know it's a little hard to see. I've checked it a couple times, and it looks like we're at uh, about 0.995. So that is, uh, it's done fermenting. There's basically no sugar left in there. So we're gonna we're gonna rack it over to a So to determine your uh, your alcohol content by volume, we're gonna take our starting specific gravity, which was 1.10. We're gonna subtract our ending specific gravity, which was 0.995. And then we're gonna multiply that by a constant of 129. And 
that equals our alcohol by content. So this batch is going to be 13.5%. That's what I'll put on the label. Um, it's a little bit strong, but uh, you know, a little bit of kick. I like to I like to taste the alcohol when I drink wine, so it's uh, you know it's good for me. I try to stick somewhere between the 12 and 15 percent range. Uh, just that's that's what we like the best. All right, we're ready to rack. Uh, I'm gonna pull out my my mesh bag and uh, I'm gonna squeeze out as much juice as I can from those uh, from those grape skins, and uh, and we'll move on to the next step. So we have our carboy uh, all clean and sanitized, our, our tubing, our siphon, and there's our must. Um, the only last thing we're going to do before we rack is add uh, one sulfite tablet, one Camden tablet. I like to keep uh, some level of sulfites uh, every time I rack, usually just a little bit, usually one tablet. Um, it just kind of some insurance and and just helps assure me it makes me feel a little better uh, regarding infection or or contamination so uh, I've never never had contaminated wine yet I don't want to have one because this is really a pain to go through all this stuff and you know to go through the months and months of time and effort and then uh, have to throw a batch away because of contamination <laughs> I just as soon use my Camden tablets and uh, and you know just have some insurance Okay, we're going to pump this thing up, start the siphon going. And there we go. This little process here is going to take probably about five or ten minutes. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, like we have everything way. racked over into our carboy. Uh, got about, oh man, almost filled it up. I had to add uh about three pints of water uh to top it off which is fine uh, uh it's cloudy as expected uh typically gonna let this sit for about 30 days and we'll rack it again check the clarity uh another 30 days last time i made this this grape wine this white wine i had to rack it three times before it you know was, was clear enough to bottle but no hurry. Uh, I'm expecting uh, for this to go about three months, and I'll come back and, and show you guys how we rack it again and do another carboy and, and all the good stuff that's at the bottom. Uh, you know, little bit left in the bottom here. This is mostly just sludge, and uh, but I typically want to get as much wine as I can out of out of here on the first uh, on the first rack. So uh, I just left the big stuff at the bottom. All that stuff will clear up, but uh, anyway, we'll see you in about a month when we uh, when we rack. Hey guys, it's been 30 days, so it's time to rack this grape wine. It's clearing up pretty good. Uh, it stopped bubbling a while back. Uh, clearing up pretty good. Uh, a lot of dead yeast and particles down at the bottom. So we're gonna rack it off of that uh, off of that stuff. We have our uh, other carboy cleaned sanitizing our tubing and all that good stuff and we'll get her to transfer all right we got her transferring over flowing good uh smells really good i don't know if you can smell that but i can we're gonna rack her up we did put one crushed camden tablet in the new carboy and we'll show you what it looks like when we're finished with the airlock back on lid We'll let her sit for another month. All right, it's been about a month. Uh, everything is cleared up pretty doggone good. There's a little bit of cloudiness, just a hair. A lot of stuff on the bottom. So I'm going to rack it one more time. Let it sit for another month, and then we'll bottle it. I'll show you what she looks like after we rack it. I don't want any sediment, or as little as possible, in my last racking before we bottle. So... I'm going to put my tip about, I don't know, two or three inches from the bottom just to make sure I don't disturb any of that, uh, any of that stuff down there. Uh, I'll leave a little bit of wine, you know, at the bottom of the bottle, but uh, that's okay. Well, it's bottling day. Everything looks good. It is crystal clear. Smells so yummy. Uh, first thing we're going to do is add 
I'm going to add Camden tablets and some potassium sorbate because we're going to back sweeten just a little bit. And we're going to sanitize all of our equipment and our bottles and our, our corks and all that good stuff. And we'll get to bottling. Now here's our finished product. Beautiful golden brown color. Uh, let's taste it. Mmm, pretty good. Needs to age about, I don't know, six months, eight months, maybe a year. Um, don't think I'm going to back sweeten it. It has a little bit of a, we like our stuff dry, so it's got a little bit of a, a sugar taste to it, but uh, I don't think I'm going to back sweeten it. Everything is cleaned and sterilized. Our bottles, good to go. We have our corks soaking. So we're going to start filling. This little cool contraption here is a bottle filler. Basically, you just, you just hold it down. It keeps pressure on it. Fill her up till the bottle is done. And move on to the next one. We have about five gallons of wine, which I think is going to end up to be about 30, 30 wine bottles. So uh, we're going to continue on with this and show you what it looks like. We ended up with 26 bottles of our grape. Um, everything looked good. We did a little sample. It tasted great. We're going to let it age for, oh, we'll probably crack one open around Christmas time. So maybe about three months. Um, but I like to let them age for about a year, uh, but I usually get impatient and have to test them out before then. Also we have, uh, right now we have some peach wine, strawberry wine, blueberry, plum, and pear. And uh, all of this is ready except the plum. The plum needs to age for, I don't know, probably another four or five months. But uh, that's what we have racked right now, and we got a lot of bottles of each, so if I come up with anything new or, or something special that we want to try, I'll make another video. Hope you all enjoy. Have a good day.